what we are going to do is to uh, have these uh, practical implications uh, to this uh, doctrine of the Trinity. And so we ask this question, what are the practical implications of the doctrine of the Trinity upon us? And then our answers will be based especially on John 14, 1 to 13. But we quote some uh, uh, verses. So, what are the implications of this doctrine of the Trinity upon us? First, it takes faith to understand the Trinity. Faith. Belief. We need to believe. So that's the, the point that we'd like to emphasize in this uh, first point. Now, we have to be honest that this has been a debate a uh, long time back so that uh, in the about 4th century there's an addition in the King James Version uh, that we can read in the King James Version now in 1st John 5 to 8 which is different from the NIV or the other versions and uh, scholars found out that this addition is an attempt to uh, support the doctrine of the Trinity because you cannot find really in the Bible the word Trinity. What is Trinity? Three in one. But in the King James Version you can find right? Four. There are three three, three that bear record in heaven. First, the Father. Second, the Word. And we know that the Word is Jesus Christ in First John uh, 1 and then 14 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and in verse uh, 14 and the word became flesh and referring to Jesus Christ so you can see here the word and then the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and these three are one so we can see here the Trinity Father the Word, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And the three are one. Trinity. But you can find that in the uh, NIV or other versions of the uh, Bible. Because, uh, as I said, this is an attempt to uh, explain the doctrine of the Trinity founded on... Uh, the Bible, three in one. Now, what uh, I'd like to say here is that uh, the doctrine of the Trinity is in the Bible, but the word Trinity is not there. So this is uh, an addition in the King James Version. This might be confuse, confusing, but the the scribes in those days, um, they tried to add something to meet the need of the context. And the context at the time is to have a support for the doctrine of the Trinity. But generally, we don't use this for the doctrine of the Trinity because we say this is an addition. Now, when I uh, was... Uh, teaching in a Sunday school, I was at that time uh, uh, teaching, uh, studying in the Bible college, and I thought, I know many things, so I asked my Sunday school students, alright, I did not prepare anything to teach, to, to teach this time, uh, you just ask any question, and uh, we are going to do the discussion based on that question, and they were silent. But one courageous young, young, uh, uh, young, pe young person asked, uh, Kuya Lawrence, can you explain about the Trinity? And I thought I, I know the doctrine of the Trinity very well. And so I tried to explain, but I realized that it was very complicated or even at this time up, up to this time it is complicated how can you explain something three and then one the the best way i can do at the time is to illustrate with using a triangle yes 
There are three angles, but then one. This is just an illustration. But if you are going to read the Bible and try to understand how can this three in one be, it is very difficult for our human uh, mind to grasp. We can see the limits of our rationality. That's why so many people cannot accept this doctrine of three in one. Even some religious people, they don't accept this doctrine of this three in one. Now, let me read uh, John 14, 9 to 11. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father because Philip was asking, show us the Father. And Jesus Christ said, don't you know the Father? You know, how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe in the evidence of the words themselves. So you can see here, the oneness of uh, uh, God and God the Father and Jesus Christ. They are uh, two, but they're also one. I, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You can see the, the relationship there. And how can that be? Uh, I don't know, maybe the apostles were confused. But what Jesus Christ was uh, saying at the time is that believe right? you may not understand fully the doctrine of the trinity but believe according to Jesus Christ um, Jesus Christ also explained this way you know, in uh, John 10 30 up to 33 Jesus said the father and I are one the Jews took up stones again to stone him Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for good work that we are stoning you, uh, that we are, we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy. Because though only a human being, you are making yourself God. Uh, uh, see, Jesus Christ was claiming to be God according to this uh, passage. Because uh, he said, the Father and I are one. So it was confusing at that time. And of course, up to this time, it's confusing. But the words of Jesus Christ said, believe. We may not understand fully, but it takes faith to believe. Now, a very clear uh, um, doctrine of the Trinity that we can see in the Bible is this uh, commission to baptize. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You can see the name singular. It's not in the names. So you can say it's, it's wrong grammar, you know. Uh, there are three. Why, why name? Not names. Right? But we can see here the unity of the uh, Trinity um, having this name. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so when uh, uh, we baptize, we do that one recognizing this uh, doctrine of the Trinity. Now, it's, it's really uh, very confusing so that uh, I remember one trying to explain, you know, now Trinity unlocked. He wrote uh, a piece, you know. Uh, Trinity and un unlock and try to explain this way, that way, that way. He was uh, one of our students, but uh, he quit and he tried to study his own and try to um, to uh, explain logically and so on, rationally and so on. And uh, at the end, he said we should not say one God in three persons. We just we just say God in three persons. Because uh, that's the, that's a trinity, no no one God, uh, and because of that, uh, his friends, you know, uh, said you are now becoming heretical. Because uh, we can see in the Bible, especially in Old Testament, one God, hero Israel, the Lord our God is one, one. 
minutes, right? And then we can see the doctrine of one in three persons. Um, and uh, because he tried to to uh, think and think and explain and uh, very confusing. And I remember that uh, when I was also uh, young, like like him, I tried to you know think and think and study and study about this uh, doctrine. And I was like a. Uh, uh, God is in my hand, you know, God, I am studying the top view of God, the side view of God, you know. Um, when I was studying theology at the time, it was uh, uh, very confusing, very interesting, but very confusing. And uh, because of that, I asked the question, um, is there really God? It came to the point that I was very confused. That I asked that question, and uh, I was uh, really, uh, you know, uh, down, and I don't know uh, what to do at that time because uh, uh, I put God in my hands, studying like that, and then later on, maybe there's no God, and I went with my friends wherever they go. You know, they go for skating, I follow them, they go to eat a banana, I follow them. Then one time they said, let's go to the prayer mountain. And I joined them. And we went to the Tats of Glory Prayer Mountain. Um, by God's grace, I recovered my faith. I said, let me go back to that place. You see, the point here is that uh, it can be confusing. And... We, we can lose our faith. But you see that the challenge of the Lord Jesus Christ is believe. No. You may not explain the doctrine of the Trinity. But he is asking, believe. Oh, here's a Anselm of Canterbury. Uh, he said, For I do not seek to understand in order to believe. But I believe in order to understand. For I believe this. Unless I believe, I will not understand. Hallelujah. And that applies to the doctrine of the Trinity. Unless I believe, I cannot understand. And so we are encouraged here to believe this doctrine. It, it might not be, uh, uh, we cannot uh, fully grasp because we cannot really put God in our hands. You know, we can, Just like the scientists putting, you know, studying the test tube. No, we cannot put God in the test tube. He is much uh, bigger than the universe, you know. And we are very much uh, limited. But we are encouraged to believe. You know, God revealed Himself this way, and we are to believe. Right? The next implication is this. The Trinity models unity and community for us. There's this... Uh, Unity, they are united in, in who they are, in what they are doing. And you can see that they also relate, you know, there is a community among, among themselves, you know, one, but three. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing the work. See, there is this... Uh, uh, Jesus Christ was doing the work, but he said, no, I'm the Father doing the work. All right, so you can see here the, the unity of this uh, uh, Father and Son, right? Uh, Father is in, in Jesus and Jesus in the Father. There is a unity. Uh, at the same time, even in their working, there is unity. And in, in the following verses in John 14, 16 to 17, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate or counselor to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Right? So we can see here the Holy Spirit being sent by the Father. Alright? And you see, uh, Jesus Christ said, I will ask the Father. And he will send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, or the counselor. So you can see here the Trinity working together. Right? Uh, 
uh, Jesus Christ asking the Father, the Father sending the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming to be among us or in us. Right? So that's the uh, unity and community of the believers in uh, not, uh, of the Trinity. In John 14, 26, But the Helper, or the Advocate, or the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I said to you. So you can see here, uh, we can see there the Holy Spirit, all right, and the Father sending in Jesus' name, right? So you can see also here the uh, working together of uh, the Trinity. That when they work, they work together, not just uh, one working and the other. No, no, they work together, even in creation, right? You can see that they work together, even in saving us, they work together. Right? So we can see the unity and community of the Trinity. Uh, not just uh, uh, working alone or not just being alone. No. Uh, they work together and they be in community. They relate together. All right? There's this community. So even before creating the universe, they have relationship. They have, they have a community. Right? And they're boring, you know, just, just one, no? They're a community. And so that's the model of, uh, of uh, our lives as uh, Christians and even human beings, you know? Uh, we cannot live alone, you know? We, are, we, we need to be together. And especially in the church, Romans 12, 4 to 5, just as each of us has one body with many believers, and these members do not all have the same functions. So in Christ, we who are many form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. Right? I belong to others. Others belong to me. You know, we are one body. Body of Christ. See, even though we are very many, but we are many. How can that be? You see, in the perspective of God, that's it. We may not understand in our rationality, but the illustration is just like this body, you know? There's the head, there's the uh, fingers, you know, hands and feet and heart and mind and many other portions of the body. But I have one body. That's the illustration of Paul, of the church. So we can see here the, the uh, doctrine of the Trinity as the model of our unity and community as believers that uh, we form one body we belong to each other right and the last point uh, the implication of this doctrine of the trinity is that the trinity lives in the believers right the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you right lives in you and will be in you that's the uh, Holy Spirit and John 14 uh, 18 I will not leave you orphans I will come to you Jesus Christ said I will come to you and uh, in, in verse 20 at that day you shall know that I am in the Father and the fa and you in me and I in you all right, so you can see uh, Jesus Christ said, I'm in the Father, uh, the Father's in me, and then you in me, and I in you. All right, so Jesus Christ in, in the believers. And in verse 23 of John 14, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. All right, so you can see here the Holy Spirit in us, Jesus Christ in us, and even and uh, even saying, all right, the Father, you know, together, you know, will make a home with you, believers, those uh, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. So we can see the Trinity living in us. But how can this be? All right, in Ephesians 1.13, when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed in Him, in Jesus Christ, you were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit in us, very clear. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, Do you not know that you are a temple of God 
and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Right? The Holy Spirit dwelling in us. So, I also remember the time I was studying theology and uh, we were talking about this Trinity and he said, and then, who now lives in you? I said, all of them. All of them. All, all the Trinity. The three in one. Uh, one in three persons. Uh, and then uh, my professor jokingly said, "All right, so maybe they are uh, in, in Tagalog nagsisiksikan, right? Nagsisiksikan sila uh, And then uh, he said, "It's it's we we know that God is in us, you know, the Trinity is in us, but it is like this. It is through the Holy Spirit, right? The Trinity is in us through the Holy Spirit. We know that they cannot be separated." But we can see the, the the presence of God the Father, the uh, God the Son in us through the Holy Spirit. And we ask this uh, question now: What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Or even we can say, if God is with us, all right? If God is in us. Who can be against us? Very powerful uh, uh, assurance that we are not alone. The believers, you know, we have God not only with us but in us, living in us through the Holy Spirit. So whatever we are facing, we are not facing alone. We have God working, helping us. That's why up to this time we can move on in our faith, in our Christian life. Because we are not alone. You might be wondering why up to this time you are believing. It's because God with us. Maybe up to this time you are still alive serving Him. God with us. Up to this time, we are still strong, fighting over our life's challenges because God with us. And so, this is an encouragement to all of us who believe in Jesus Christ, in God. As He promised, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, doctrine of the Trinity. Difficult to understand, but thank you that we can be assured. You have encouraged us to believe and we can understand. And we continue to believe, Lord. Help us and help us overcome our unbelief. We also thank you that uh, the reality of the Trinity you know, challenge us as believers to be united, to be one, to be together in serving you. And thank you also of the assurance that you're always with us and you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. Whatever we are facing, we know. You know what's happening and you are with us. Continue to hold us, hold us Hold our hands as we walk through life in serving. I now pray for those who are listening that uh, you bless them, you strengthen them, encourage them, and assure them, Lord, of your presence with all of us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.